I'm Stephanie Welga. I'm a member of the NewGen Bioinformatics team. Hello, my name is Asher Shraya. I'm a member of the NewGen Technical Support team. This short video will give an overview of the data processing steps required when using NewGen's single primer enrichment technology for the targeted enrichment of genomic DNA and detection of sequence variants. The details are applicable to the analysis of sequencing data generated from any of the Illumina sequencing platforms, and the workflow described will be the same downstream of library preparation with either user-defined custom panels for the enrichment of genomic DNA samples or the NuGen's standard cancer panel products. Please do not hesitate to contact NuGen's technical support team if you have any additional questions. The structure of the library generated with the Ovation Target Enrichment System is similar to a standard Illumina library and uses the same sequencing primers. There are, however, a few differences. One, we've relocated the barcode, or the index, to the forward adapter. Adjacent to the barcode are six random nucleotides, which are used for PCR duplicate identification. For variant analysis of genomic DNA, we recommend a, a single end read with a 14 base pair index read although a reverse read may be necessary for some applications. After demultiplexing, you'll end up with a FASTQ file for each of your barcoded samples. For each sample, we want to begin by trimming these FASTQ files. We take two steps for trimming. The first step, we use Trim Galore to trim low quality bases from the reads. This will ensure that we do not end up with any false positive SNP calls. Next, we use BBDuck to remove the probe sequence from the end of the forward read. This will ensure that we do not falsely call SNPs where the probe sequence lies. After trimming, we can then map the reads, and to do this, we use Bowtie 2 and align the reads to the genome. The SAM file generated by the Bowtie 2 alignment and the N6 information can be used as input into the N6 duplicate marking tool. Multiple reads with the same start position, but different N6 information indicates independent ligation events. Sequences with the same start position and the same N6 information indicate PCR duplicates. The BAM files generated from the N6 duplicate marking tool can then be used as input into Picard Calculate HS metrics to get a general sense of your on-target rate for your library. Picard Calculate HS metrics generates a table containing the number of bases aligned and the on-target bases that can be used to calculate an on-target percentage. Also within this table are metrics on the percent of target bases covered at various coverage levels. Information from this table can be compiled and simplified into a summary table, including alignment and N6 duplication metrics. The VAM file generated from the N6 duplicate marking tool can also then be fed into the GATK best practices pipeline to get variant calls. After our Bowtie 2 alignment, we use our N6 duplicate marking tool, so we skip the mark duplicate step in the best practices procedure. After that, we continue along with indel realignment, base recalibration, and finally use haplotype caller to generate the .vcf file. The vcf file will have your final SNP calls that come out of the GATK pipeline, and from there you can post-process these variants using VEDTools Intersect to get only on-target SNPs, and then SAMP Tools and Pileup to only pull out SNPs that have enough coverage, and in this case we use at least 20 reads. And then also you can further filter the list using the quality metric that comes out of GATK. We prefer to use a quality of greater than 200. Finally, you'll end up with a VCF file of SNPs that you can then take for further evaluation. After GATK, you'll get a new processed BAM file after realignment and recalibration. This BAM file can then be used in IGV to visualize the SNPs. Here in IGV, I'm showing three target exons of the ALK gene. You'll notice that each target has reads coming from both strands colored in red and blue. If you zoom in to a target, you'll notice a sudden dip in the coverage representing the probe location. This is because we've trimmed these reads to remove any probe sequence. This is, however, not a complete loss of coverage since we will still have reads from the opposite strand. If we zoom in to another target, we can visualize the actual SNPs within the reads. 
For this target, we have called one homozygous SNP as well as another heterozygous SNP.